Hello everyone and thank you for watching. Today's presentation is on how to identify overfit trading strategies. In terms of prerequisites, uh, we'll assume today that you have some experience investing in Darwin's and that you have experience with Darwin investment attributes. And finally, if you're a trader, then some experience in trading strategy development will definitely assist you in following the contents comfortably today. In terms of agenda, we'll go through a brief introduction, followed by discussing two main types of overfit trading strategies, these being model-focused and risk-focused. We'll discuss typical features and behaviors in each of these categories, and finally, we'll talk about how traders can address overfitting and how investors can avoid investing in overfit Darwins. Uh, to begin with the introduction, let's uh, discuss a few key points here to do with overfit trading strategies. Um, they typically perform well in backtesting, uh, creating the illusion that they exploit a market inefficiency really well. While these same strategies in a live trading environment, uh, they perform disproportionately differently to what was observed in backtesting. And this is due primarily to their modeling historical data too closely. Um, obviously, this prevents them from generalizing well to unseen data in future because they're so perfectly uh, capable of modeling historical data that any change in that data in future is uh, therefore outside the remit of such strategies and they can't model that really well and therefore they perform poorly or fail entirely. This, of course, is to the detriment of both traders and investors, Darwin investors, because traders um, employing uh, real capital, taking these potentially overfit strategies to market is a problem. And Darwin investors backing a Darwin with real capital on the market that could potentially have an overfit underlying strategy is also a problem. So both parties are negatively impacted when an overfit strategy is in play. Now, there are two types of overfit trading strategies, these being model and risk focused. So let's start with talking a little about model focused uh, overfit strategies. In this scenario, a strategy fits historical data too closely and exhibits high variance when tested on unseen data. It will typically perform very well in backtesting, but uh, either stagnate for lengthy periods of time where it goes sideways as opposed to say uh, an uptrend in its growth in the back test suddenly turns into uh, a sideways movement uh, or a progressively declining movement but not as fast uh, or it may fail entirely in live testing well, resulting in a complete reversal of returns from positive to negative so from both a uh, a trader and investor's perspective, uh, these, these strategies are therefore quite easy to identify visually. Returns will reach a point of inflection where they no longer appear similar to historical performance. And the best way to visualize this is through this graphic where we have on the left-hand side, the, in the light blue section of this graphic, we have a strategy that's performing really well in its in-sample data or on its training phase in the back test. And when put to out-of-sample uh, out data, the strategy fails entirely by reaching its point of inflection, stagnating for a little bit before eventually reversing returns to the downside. In the case of risk-focused uh, overfit strategies, where we're looking at a different scenario altogether. These strategies demonstrate smooth, consistent returns in backtesting, as well as in live trading for a period of time. And they're usually more dangerous than model overfit strategies, as they're difficult to identify from looking at just returns charts. So we'll discuss um, how Darwin investment attributes come into play uh, that can assist both traders and investors in isolating such uh, strategies that showcase the same behavior uh, as they did in the backtest in live trading. But the catch is they do it for a short period of time before eventually collapsing. So we'll go through some Darwin investment attributes that allow us to um, isolate such strategies uh, for our own benefit in future to avoid investing in them. A typical backtest for a risk-focused strategy will look something like this, uh, fairly logarithmic in nature. It will perform excessively well in backtesting and keep up this behavior, possibly in live trading, for a short period of time. Typically, you'll see uh, almost um, uh, a level of invin invincibility in, in such a strategy where the backtest looks fantastic. And this is not due to the strategy being really good, but to uh, loss of our risk management practices that compensate for inferior timing, as we'll talk about shortly. Um, in live trading, a, a strategy that looked like that in the back test uh, will perform for a period of time. As you can see on the left-hand side, that is not a back test, that's a live record. And uh, eventually, after some time, the loss of us uh, risk management practice will give way and the strategy will collapse entirely, as you can see on the right-hand side of this graphic. 
typical features and behaviors uh, of both model focused and risk focused strategies are up next so for model focused strategies it's quite straightforward to identify trading strategies that overfit to historical data as we just talked about and so graphic for the point of inflection uh, stagnation and returns eventual reversal in returns from positive to negative Compared to the training phases uh, in back tests, their test phases and live performance may demonstrate, as we said, excess stagnation, larger drawdowns than you're used to from the back tests, and um, overall reversal in forecast returns. Um, of the 12 investment attributes, Darwin investment attributes available, this behavior is captured best by the evolution of the following. So you have experience, performance, risk stability, positive negative returns consistency, duration consistency, capacity loss aversion, and open close strategy. Low scores or unstable evolution of scores in these attributes, especially when the strategy has been launched live as a Darwin, uh, can serve as a useful indicator to detect overfitting. And we'll talk about some combinations and scenarios shortly on how you can go about monitoring uh, a strategy uh, or a portfolio of Darwins that you may be looking to invest in by taking a closer look at some of these attributes. Evolution of scores for the above attributes that we just saw uh, is likely to demonstrate high variance. Um, evolution of scores for the above attributes likely high variance when subjected to test data and or in live trading when it's an overfit strategy. Typically, there are three combinations of scores for the above attributes um, and they demonstrate consistent performance between back tests and live trading only when accompanied by high levels, high scores of experience, market correlation, and risk stability. The first combination uh, encapsulates low capacity, uh, high scores for um, low scores for capacity, high scores for open and close strategy, high scores for performance, and high scores for negative returns consistency. If scores for OSCS and negative returns consistency progressively decline over time, the likelihood of the strategy being overfit increases. That's something you can spot with this one first combination. The second combination uh, involves a moderate score for capacity, a high score for loss aversion, and a high score for performance. And if high scores for loss aversion and risk stability in this combination progressively decline after the Darwin is launched live, the likelihood of the underlying strategy being overfit increases as well. The third combination uh, involves a high score for performance, a very high score for positive and negative returns consistency or uh, duration consistency, and a moderate score for loss aversion. Now, in this particular case, a strategy with this combination of scores in the back test is the least likely to be overfit. And it's therefore quite difficult to find. However, you should apply the same rules for monitoring declines in scores as you did to the other two combinations or any other combination that you come up with uh, after the Darwin is launched live. Always keep an eye on the evolution of these particular investment attributes as they can be the, the fine line between a strategy being overfit or not and allow you to decipher that uh, effectively. Traders can benefit, therefore, from uploading trading strategy backtests to the DowinX platform for analysis. Uh, examining the evolution of the scores we just talked about provides a valuable layer of insight into how symmetric performance is going to be uh, in, in live trading as it was in backtesting. And if steady evolution is observed over training data, but high variance is observed in test data, then the likelihood of the strategy generalizing well out of sample or to unseen data is obviously low. Stra if the evolution was great before, but in live trading it is not, then you know that you're looking at an overfit scenario. Here's an example of um, a chart that shows uh, positive negative returns consistency and duration consistency. Uh, shows the stable evolution of risk and these parameters uh, over time. It's important to note that stable evolution doesn't translate to upwards or downwards uh, movement. It translates to the evolution of the attributes values over a stable range over time. Uh, most importantly, in risk stability. So if you have, if you're monitoring a Darwin that exhibits such behavior, then you're you're looking at stable evolution over time, and therefore overfit risk. Um, as long as you've looked at the other parameters as well, overfit risk reduces. Now, talking about risk-focused uh, overfit strategies, we have here we have trading strategies where loss-averse risk management compensates for poor timing. And 
therefore generate generates unrealistic returns in backtesting. We saw uh, we'll see a graphic here shortly where it'll be quite logarithmic in nature, and, and that'll be a good way to demonstrate what uh, compensating for poor timing uh, looks like in practice. Uh, these strategies typically employ poorly timed trades. They'll, they'll see poorly timed trades that are not closed for lengthy periods of time and additional orders being opened in the same direction as the poorly timed ones. Uh, the attempt there being to recover the position at incrementally better prices. So the behavior is such that uh, when you have trades that do go well, they're taken off the table very quickly for small quick profits. But when a trade goes bad, uh, it's very, very difficult for such a strategy to close it uh, and uh, difficult in the sense that the trader behind the strategy does not want to close it. Instead, the trader will look to open additional positions in the same direction in the hope of getting a better price the next time and the next time and the next time. And so the story goes on. Excess leverage is also employed per trade in an attempt to recover losing positions at incrementally better prices. And of the 12 investment attributes available, this behavior, this risk-focused overfit behavior, uh, where uh, poor timing is being compensated for by excess risk, is captured best by the following uh, attributes. Loss aversion, a combination of low loss aversion and high capacity scores, uh, risk stability score, and market correlation score. The evolution of scores received for these particular investment attributes uh, provides valuable insight into whether a strategy will compensate for inferior timing by employing loss-averse risk management practices. Poor scores in particular for risk stability and market correlation add strong confirmation that risk-focused overfitting is likely the case with the strategy. And uh, finally, um, a, a strong negative correlation with Darwin DWC adds even more confirmation to this particular risk. Now, how traders can address overfitting uh, is uh, a subject we've covered uh, in the past with a blog post on do's and don'ts of MetaTrader 4 backtesting, um, where we detail several steps traders can take to address um, and eliminate uh, overfitting from their trading strategies as best as possible. Uh, the post is available on the following link. Uh, if this link is difficult to copy from the slide here, not visible too clearly, uh, simply um, proceed to the DarwinX blog and search for do's, don'ts, MT4 backtesting, or just MetaTrader 4 backtesting, and you should arrive at the blog post. We also did a webinar as a follow-up to this blog post, and the replay for that webinar is available on YouTube. So um, again, if this link is difficult to copy from the slide here, please go straight to the channel, the YouTube channel uh, for DarwinX, and type in MetaTrader for backtesting or do's don'ts, and you should come. Uh, uh, you should arrive at the uh, webinar replay in question. For investors, how they can avoid overfit Darwin's? It's a case of. Uh, Taking a look at the investment attributes, the evolution of invest, uh, investment attributes, as we've discussed today. If you take a closer look at experience, risk stability, market correlation, performance, uh, loss aversion, capacity, open close strategy, positive negative returns consistency, and duration consistency, in the manner that we've described today, uh, it is it becomes a lot more, uh, a lot easier to identify potentially overfit strategies. Obviously, the the likelihood of always getting to an overfit strategy is not going to be 100%, but you're definitely in a much better place by taking a look at not only the evolution of the strategy in backtesting outside of the realm of investment attributes, but also taking a look at the evolution of scores of these particular investment attributes once the Darwin has launched live. If you see a high variance between past and present uh, evolution, Firstly, or uh, dramatic differences in scores, the evolution of scores between backtesting and um, when the strategy was launched live as a Darwin, um, you know that uh, the risk of overfitting, both model-focused and risk-focused, uh, can be high. We've also talked about how you can distinguish between model-focused risk and risk-focused overfit risk. Model focused, it will be uh, usually a strategy will demonstrate uh, a decline in performance um, such that it reaches a point of inflection. It will either stagnate or uh, forecast returns will uh, completely reverse. Whereas with a risk focused strategy, uh, it's different in that. Uh, what you see in backtesting will probably uh, continue into live trading uh, as long as the strategy is capable of, uh, the account uh, parameters are capable of handling that level of risk. But eventually, 
such a strategy is very likely to collapse. And uh, we saw this in the uh, screen grabs we saw earlier of strategies that continued into the future into live trading as they did in the past were risk focused, employing high leverage, employing uh, excess orders to compensate for previously poorly timed orders and eventually ended up collapsing in real time as well. So hopefully this has been uh, a useful uh, presentation on uh, the various ways in which you can identify overfit strategies, both uh, on their own as trading strategies also, and also as uh, Darwin's. If you have any questions that you feel weren't covered in the contents of this presentation, please do feel free to comment under the video here on YouTube uh, in the comment section with any questions. We'll happily uh, answer them there and then. Uh, if you feel there's uh, any other material that you would like to be covered uh, with such a presentation in the future, please do feel free to write to info at darwinx.com with your comments and feedback. And we're all, always happy to entertain feedback and get uh, back to you with as best a solution as possible to most things. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you on the next presentation.